Good evening, everybody. Let's uh, stop sharing the music screen. Hi, Lady B. Hey, Tim. Hey, Steve. Uh, great to see you guys in here. Yeah, I'm glad you can catch the live, too. This is... Uh, I'm going to surprise you tonight. I bet you don't know what I'm going to talk about. And uh, it's one of the great things about civil rights is that every day I wake up and something sets me off and then I have inspiration to write and uh, go for at least a whole day. So today I'm going to share a screen here with you. With uh, do, do, do. Is that? That's Twitter, right? There we go. So, convicted abuser and former U.S. gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser was stabbed multiple times in prison. And my commentary is, uh, and was as follows. What does America represent to itself and the world? Does desperation for justice turn us into caged animals? Heroic people survived this vile monster. Don't believe for a moment that death won't be Nassar's easy way out. No justice is served. And uh, not surprisingly at all, one of the comments that I got back was 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 very typical of I think the the spirit of the coverage. A bit of good news today, says says uh, Jason, and my commentary there was I can't blame anyone for those feelings about Larry Nassar. That monstrous and terrible man violated so much life that there's a natural visceral reaction and revulsion in many of us to the very thought of his survival and existence. And I think that that's, uh, that that's very true. We're not going to be talking a lot about Larry Nassar and his crimes or anything like that, Lady B. Um, this is about civil rights. So interestingly enough, I, I entitled this show uh, something around the uh the area of let's see what we what we called it pedophiles conspiracies realities civil rights and justice so uh that was a subject that got rejected uh the titles got rejected because of the pedophiles and isn't that interesting because here um we have the case of Larry Nasser who uh, is a convict convict and is in jail and there's a number of things going on uh first of all we're celebrating a person's torture and attempted murder while incarcerated and while that sounds great for somebody that causes such a visceral reaction in, in people, that's a terrible thing for civil rights. It's a terrible thing for humanity. Uh, much like the death penalty, humans have a way of getting things wrong. And in order to put people to death, in order to do terrible things to one person, that means that we accept that those terrible things are also going to be done to other people and to innocent people as well. Uh, there are, yes, there are rules in prison, which we'll talk about. And those rules in prison, I have some very close friends that, that spent time uh, in federal prison and, and behind bars. I've spent time uh, in maximum security uh solitary confinement jail and these are brutal places uh prison is more for professional prisoners right these are these are brutal places but there's an ethic in prison if you didn't know that anybody and everybody uh 
is expected to attack and attempt to kill, uh, maim, and destroy sexual uh, convicts, sexual predator convicts, uh, pedophiles, and the like. And that is undoubtedly what happened to Larry Nassar, is that he was simply jumped because he's in jail for the terrible and horrible crimes that he committed. Uh, I don't know how, how long his sentence was. That doesn't isn't really germane here. It was for a very, a very long time. Uh, he has not died. He's, he's currently, uh, last I checked, still alive and in the hospital. None of this is a surprise, right? None of this is a surprise. But what does it mean in the bigger picture when justice is a in prison attempt on a person's life while people are killed on the streets by heavily armed militarized police while there are all types of crimes that go on in this country and there is uh, a significant amount of sexual predatory crimes against children in this country but what's what's so strange about that is not that these crimes that have happened in the u.s gymnastics in the boy scouts in the catholic church in uh in uh catlin gable the the premier private school of the portland area for very wealthy connected families uh there is really no part of society that hasn't been touched by this tragedy yet QAnon and conspiracy theorists have taken it to absurd places there's a movie out now with Jim Caviezel um, about a very sensationalized unconfirmed uh, alleged uh, heroic effort to end child trafficking and that is uh that's a very unfortunate way to focus upon this issue, as is the, the celebration of an attempt on a person's life while they're in custody. Because what that means is that in reality, the human uh, race in our justice system is completely and totally out of control. Um, and we don't even trust ourselves to mete out justice anymore that is not a recipe for a stable society so let's let's go into a couple different stories and why maybe this this means a lot to me um number one uh i have a friend who was impacted by the sexual abuse that was rampant in the U.S. gymnastics uh, community. And their entire life was changed by the behavior of other people in the institution, um, not in particular Larry Nassar, but this was endemic to the institution and many adults knew and many people let this go. So when we celebrate the destruction of one person, we're stepping aside from the actual endemic uh, abuse of power. That same thing happened in Portland, Oregon. Some of you may know, some of you may not know that uh, there was a very famous pedophile in Portland, Oregon. And let's see here. He was the mayor of Portland, Oregon. Then he went on to become the governor of the state of Oregon. Then he went on to become the, uh, the secretary of transportation for the Carter administration. That person's name was uh, Neil Goldschmidt. 
And so uh, Neil Goldschmidt raped this little girl starting at the age of 13 when her mother worked in his office. And Neil Goldschmidt uh, was not the only person that knew this was going on. This girl would come to the uh, city hall in the state in the city of Portland uh, after school. And apparently they would kind of play footsie and be very, uh, very uh, familiar with each other. His security knew. Uh, other people around knew what was going on. It's unclear what her mother may or may not have known. Uh, she has since passed away, which is a terrible uh, tragedy. She had a very difficult life after that abuse and quite um, bizarrely, but I guess also somewhat typically, that abuse continued on into her adult life and it only came out uh, to a public knowledge when Goldschmidt uh, wrote a letter to her apologizing many, many years later after uh, some type of, of uh, contact and she passed away and that information uh, came out and it was a huge scandal. Many people fail, uh, felt very, very betrayed. And they were betrayed. But there was also uh, many people who knew. Who knew exactly what was going on with Neil Goldschmidt. Who knew what was going on with this little girl. And who looked the other way. So... When that happened, the consequences were were very swift. Uh, unfortunately, because uh, the victim passed away, and because the statute of limitations for the uh, serial raping of a child had passed, there were never any criminal charges uh, brought against Neil Goldschmidt. And Neil Goldschmidt left the country and now lives uh, reportedly in France at the age of 82, uh, unprosecuted for his known crimes. So the aspect of that that becomes maybe a little bit uh, more interesting today is that after that, after that uh, revelation of what Goldschmidt had done and all that had been around this, They took his picture down from the state capitol in Oregon. I think he was, I think he was the 45th governor of the state of Oregon, if I remember correctly. But anyway, they took his large governor's portrait down from the state capitol and put it into the archives, never to be seen again. And uh, that was a fairly uh, well publicized. event in the newspaper and uh, around the community. So let's skip forward to a few years later. And that few years later, uh, I was in Portland as an activist in the mayor's office. And surprisingly, uh, when I was in the mayor's office dealing with some issues around uh, police accountability, I looked up on the wall and there was a photo right here, which you see in this picture. There was a photo of Neil Goldschmidt on the honored wall of mayors in the public lobby of current mayor Ted Wheeler's office. And I thought that was completely and totally absurd, which it in fact was. And so I made a request to meet with the mayor. Then I made a request to uh, have the photo taken down. I made the point that that it was clearly against the standards of the city, and it was absurd. So Ted Wheeler being Ted Wheeler, uh, he refused to meet with me, and he also refused to take the photo down. So that was... Uh, that was very uh, upsetting to me 
I, uh, unconscionable, I guess, is is basically the way I would say it, because we already had this community standard of it being taken down from the state of Oregon's capital once he went on to be the governor of the state of Oregon. So there was a strong community precedent there. So uh, I was in the cap in the city hall of Portland later, uh, a few weeks later, and I made plans to go to the office, take the picture down and destroy it, and then wait there and to be arrested by the police in an act of civil disobedience. This is actually. And so uh, when I went up to do that, the office was empty because everybody was down in the chambers and I just took a little bit of walk of a walk. So something happened and, and we can watch what happened here. This is from the Oregonian uh, site, courtesy of, of me. He said Wheeler's office. So I broadcasted this live while I did the uh, crime, I guess. Um, this guy right here. Wait a minute. This guy right here. Let's take that off the wall. Let's go ahead and take this out. So. You have a good day, sir. All right. I'm going to have a great one, man. So at this point, this was just a, that that's me. That's me doing that. Uh, at this point, it's just a spontaneous decision. So what happened was because I, yeah, I, you haven't even seen all the times I've been arrested, Lady B. Um, because there was nobody there, I, I made the split second decision to uh, walk it out of the building. So I took it down, I put it under my coat, and I walked it out of the building. You know, guys, I thought I was getting, I thought I was getting arrested today. And I'm not, I don't think. Because I just got away with it. That was pretty funny. I just took a pedophile off the wall of the uh, mayor's office. That was pretty sweet. That's been bugging me for a long time. Burn, Neil, burn. Uh, so let's let's skip forward. I don't. I won't blow the complete story for you, but uh, we'll skip forward a little bit from uh, that day to uh, let's see here oh yeah here we go here we go Let's see. Can you see that? No. Let's see. We need. I need to switch the screen. So I need to stop sharing. Remove from screen. Right. And then I need to share another screen. Stop screen. Okay. So now share screen, and we want to do this this one. All right. So um, <clears throat> I took it home, and I had a pretty good time. And uh, so my my housemate at the time had a rat, and so I took the took the glass off, and I took some pictures with uh, Neil Goldschmidt, the rat, and I, I trolled the city mercilessly, um, and people called uh, the city to say uh, to ask what was going on and uh, where the photo was. Uh, because they knew that it had been taken, the city had not even figured out that that uh, that it had been taken as of yet. So it just kind of got more fun. So I went on the news and I showed this thing around, and uh, kept it for uh, about ten days while I went on basically every news station in Portland and the papers and everything. And uh, the police were looking for me everywhere, which is pretty funny. So uh, apparently they couldn't find me because I had just, I was renting a, a half of a house, but I had not registered my address anywhere. So I was in Portland hiding out, having all the news stations come by my house and meeting me at the park to, to taunt 
uh, Ted Wheeler, that was really uh, exhilarating. So maybe that kind of led me up to the uh, to the where I am today of working against the corporation of DoorDash is kind of taking on the the city of Portland and these ridiculous people that do ridiculous things and stand for nothing uh, except exploitation and self enrichment is a pretty uh, is a pretty fun thing to do. So let's go back over here. So fast forward Singing and on a pose. It's time for that to stop. He doesn't. We decided, I decided it wasn't going back to City Hall and I knew the police would probably be closing in at some point. So I invited my friend Donna Hayes over and we burned it on TV. Do his job. The police doesn't do their job. And Ted doesn't do their job. I'm tired of all three books. So that was that for a short time and uh i called myself into the police and the next morning i uh, made arrangements to meet them at a park and uh obviously i knew turn myself in so i was in the shower at 8 30 uh, a.m i was supposed to meet them at 9 30 and I heard my dog barking and my roommates and uh, heard a commotion and I knew uh, that shit was going down. And so they showed up and said, uh, this is, it, I, I was naked in the shower. So I, I jumped out of the shower and kind of threw some stuff on and, and uh, there was like 20 armed cops uh, lining my street with guns drawn, uh, coming to the house to to get me that's how that's how upset they were that i had burned their beloved pedophile picture that was allegedly worth uh i believe gosh i can't even remember now it's been a few years i, I think it was worth 20 dollars or something like that it was one of uh about 10 numbered copies that were owned by the oregon historical society and it was a nothing special black and white photo except it was hanging on the the wall of the um, of the city hall. So, uh, that kind of, uh, let's say up the game a little bit in the, in working, uh, with the city and they attempted to illegally bar me from, from going to city hall again, which was against my civil rights. Um, and I kind of got into a, a standoff over civil rights, which ended up with me spending 20 days in solitary confinement in the Multnomah County Inverness Jail. Um, I elected to do that to make a point with, with civil disobedience. But uh, what, what they did was amazing. Uh, they took my iPhone. They cracked it with FBI software. They got a judge to actually give them a warrant. They didn't, I mean... I had burned a picture. There was no evidence. They had the evidence uh, that was necessary. I turned myself in. So they were just fishing. They were hoping that they could find literally anything on me uh, to get rid of me or hurt me or put me away for a really long time or something like that. They wanted to find some kind of collusion or somebody paying me or supporting me in doing this. I work alone, which is kind of fun because that makes me hard to predict. So anyway, uh, all of those standoffs ended with jail time for me. And that was actually a really valuable time where I learned a lot. Um, of course, one of the things that you do in jail is you can meet different kinds of people and I actually met people in jail that uh, were accused of those crimes, not yet convicted, and they were very afraid for their lives. And uh, not surprisingly, most of them claimed that they didn't do it. It was misunderstandings. The person lied. Da, 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 da. I mean, who, who knows? People are telling the stories in jail that they tell. Nevertheless, these people are innocent till proven guilty and their lives are imminently in danger every day. 
uh, these people could be in a food line and all of a sudden just be jumped by somebody who smashes a tray into their face and starts punching them into the ground until they get tased or pulled off. Um, these are the things that happen. So the question is, is that justice? Is that justice? Is, is that the way that these people should be treated that have committed these types of crimes? And if so, then why are people like Neil Goldschmidt uh, still defended and revered by people in power? Um, there's another uh, person in Portland that was part of that same scandal, and his name is Matt Hennessy. Anybody that knows Portland um, is going to know that name, Reverend Matt Hennessy. And shockingly, uh, he is a pastor who works with children and he's a pastor at, at Portland's largest black church uh, that was once visited by Martin Luther King. And he is an unconvicted but admitted pedophile who had sex with a underage uh, family member confirmed this was all in the paper. He was actually part of the scandal that uh, that came out when Goldschmidt was released. I'm going to share this screen here to So here we go. This is right here. Uh, Matt Hennessy. Okay, so he's in the church where Martin Luther King visited. And Hennessy is very well known uh, and admitted in the paper to uh, raping. There we go. Let's see. Several things about the abuse which Hennessy confirmed in emails obtained by the Oregonian are eerie. The first and most obvious is the parallel to former Governor Neil Goldschmidt, who in May 2004 admitted his own sexual abuse 30 years ago of a young girl when she was 14. She was actually 13 at the time. That admission came six months after Kulingowski, he was the governor, appointed Goldschmidt to the Board of Higher Education. So uh, he was giving he was giving Goldschmidt uh, a very high level job in Portland. And, and this came out. Uh, so here's Matt Hennessy's sexual abuse. According to the Oregonian, Matt Hennessy sexually abused a young female relative over a decade ago. Hennessy has been rumored to be a candidate for public office from county chairs to Congress to mayor. He recently departed his post as chair of the Portland Development Commission as a CEO of Crick Track Inc. Uh, according to the Oregonian, Hennessy admitted his contact in an email to the woman now age 29. Prosecutors declined to press charges in 1993 because Hennessy, the teenager, and her mother refused to cooperate. But in recent interviews and a signed statement to the Oregonian, the woman, now 29, says Hennessy abused her several times per week from age 12 or 13 to 16. The woman also provided two emails that says Hennessy sent, she said Hennessy sent in January 2003 after she decided to break off contact with him in the long missives. Hennessy apologized twice for sexually abusing her, adding that he, quote, never sexually abused anyone before you and never have since then, end quote. Hennessy, who was about 29 to 33 when he was raping that 12 to 13 to 16 year old, uh, at the time of the alleged abuse, did not dispute the emails. In his statement, he said he did not, quote, begrudge anyone for sharing with you private and privileged emails, end quote. He said they were written, quote, with the intent of aiding our healing process, end quote. So isn't it nice that Pastor Hennessy can, under the cloak of religion, 
um, go through his healing process without going to jail or being a target. And in fact, he's just a darling of the political community. You know who this is right here? This is Mayor Ted Wheeler. You know who this is right here? This is uh, right here. This is uh, former Multnomah County Commissioner uh, Gretchen Kafori, one of the most powerful families um, in Portland. Uh, this is uh, just out of office Governor Kate Brown, Kate Brown. And here we are with our dear pastor, Matt Hennessy, on Martin Luther King Day. And so here we have the guy, Ted Wheeler, who keeps pictures of, of Neil Goldschmidt on his wall in his public, in the public lobby of his office, the sitting governor and the uh, county commissioner of Oregon's most populous county, including the Portland metropolitan area, celebrating with uh, a known uh, child rapist who had sex with a 12 to 13 to 16 year old while he was a full grown adult man. What is wrong with this picture? Why do these people hang out with Matt Hennessy? Why do they continue to support and and defend uh, Goldschmidt? Why are they so shameless as to keep these these mementos of terrible, heinous abusers in public? Uh, that's a great question, isn't it? That's that's really a, a critical question because what we have is kind of a, a, a two tiered justice system where people that are in lower castes are going to be maybe murdered in prison or in jail for even being accused of a crime, whether whether they're guilty or innocent. Well, people with wealth and power can get away with it systematically for years and years and years and continue to stick up for each other even to this day shamelessly just just absolutely shamelessly and they the city in all of those uh issues attempted to get three and a half years of criminal charges uh on me for those activities again without any recognition of the fact that they were defending the indefensible, that even, even uh, obviously violated the community standards of the state of Oregon because the state of Oregon had already removed the picture of the uh, admitted child rapist, Neil Goldschmidt, who escaped all consequences for ruining uh, Elizabeth Lynn Dunham's life. And this stuff is out there today, known, um, admitted. And nobody does anything about it. Yet QAnon conspiracies want to talk about adrenochrome and fantasies of children being trafficked around the world that that have no confirmation and talk about uh, political parties, you know, doing these things systematically. And all of those conspiracy theories harden people's thoughts against the fact that this stuff really does go on with real powerful people that need to be held accountable, right? Do you see how we're missing the boat when we're chasing conspiracy theories and Matt Hennessy uh, publicly promotes on his church's website that he works with young people, that he loves to work with young people? The guy who raped children, never had criminal charges, is better. he's forgiven himself and now he works with young people and he hangs out with the governor of the state of Oregon, the mayor of the, the city of Portland and the uh, county commissioner and all the other political dignitaries. Uh, there's something really wrong here. And again, the, the city attorneys, the judges, the prosecutors, they will all defend the right to worship their pedophiles of power and to keep them at the forefront and to keep their name and their image and their, uh, their brand fresh. They never take accountability. 
and and they absolve each other unconscionably absolve each other i still can't believe matt hennessy shows his face in public as a pastor as some kind of a man of god as some kind of a man who works with children for god's sakes who who the hell knows what's wrong uh with this guy's uh church and what it is that uh that they could possibly see in a man who's committed such heinous crimes um and believe that somehow he is uh he is absolved uh, uh, or he's he's better now and i'll tell you one other story um about the fact how he's not better now uh, i have a very close friend who was matt hennessy's neighbor and when matt hennessy's uh she was a single mom and when when uh, matt hennessy's wife was out of town matt hennessy went next door and attempted to have sex with her and uh was very forward about it and very obnoxious about it and she told him to bug off and he came back the next day groveling and apologizing and saying that's not like him and and you know he wasn't himself and yada yada so um i've got it by a personal account from a very close personal friend that matt hennessy's uh, sexual shenanigans are far from over and there are, there are many other rumors about this creepy man just as 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 we know that ted wheeler hangs out with a nefarious group of people um who have criminal uh histories in uh child predation um so this is the victim of neil goldschmidt uh elizabeth lynn dunham uh she passed away uh, a number of years ago and uh, 2011 and there are a number of stories written about her that that you can find and and the impact of what um, Neil Goldschmidt's uh, abuse of her has done and again this man lives free today in France and and has never been accountable for his crimes. So, I think that the summary of of what i wanted to to get into is is really the whole concept of what is a justice system and what is justice and who is it for um equal protection under the law should be for all children equal protection under the law should be for all people uh and prisons and jails should be for keeping every person accused of a crime and every person guilty of a crime safely incarcerated for whatever person that whatever purpose they're incarcerated for uh i do not celebrate the worst humans being murdered in jail because that certainly means that innocent humans are also being murdered in jail I do not support the death penalty because the death penalty has been proven racist and it's been proven uh, way too many times uh, to be used improperly and unjustly. And so even if we have somebody that's a known serial killer, confirmed, convicted, admitted, famous, I do not support the death penalty because when we do that, that means that we're also going to put innocent people to death. We're going to put people to death that are framed. We're going to put people to death of lower castes, of uh, lower status minorities, people of color, people of lower socioeconomic uh, backgrounds. And the people that do heinous crimes and are wealthy will have the best representation and the best lawyers and will never face those type of charges. So 
a justice system has to be established that we trust again. Because if, if vigilante justice and seeing uh, serial rapist murdered or stabbed in jail is what we want as a people, uh, we're just in pure chaos. We're just in reactive uh, vigilante and, and vengeance mode, and it won't get us anywhere. And it's not protecting our children. And most importantly, it's not holding people like Matt Hennessy and Neil Goldschmidt and their enablers like Ted Wheeler and Kate Brown and and all the others that that hang around with them. It's not holding them accountable for the standards that we expect. So that was something that really got to me today. And and uh, geez, I'm not even sure I did a very good job of telling the story tonight. I probably didn't, but I enjoyed hanging out with you. And I'm glad we got a chance to, you know, to kind of get some of this out there. I think maybe it was a little cathartic for me. And uh, wish everybody the best tonight. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. But uh, send me any comments. Send me any questions. Uh, do you celebrate when the worst of our people are are murdered or attacked or maimed or killed in jail? Is that justice? Is that the type of prison and jail system we should have? Can we do better? What should happen with Matt Hennessy? Um, today in Portland? Should he still be leading Martin Luther King Day uh, celebrations with the governor and the mayor and the and the county commissioners? Or should he be, um, should he still be working with children? And those are all, those are all questions that really, really bother me because when I wanted to make a statement by burning that picture and taking it down, I, I wanted to see some change and nothing has changed. Everybody knows. Still, everybody knows. Everybody knows who these people are and what they're doing. That they're out there. Some people get a pass. Some people get a, a pass. So what, what is Ride Tribute? Uh, Tara Memory is another community gem. Yeah, Tara Memory was, uh, that one hits really home for me um, because I was a trumpet player. And Tara Memory was a uh, famous jazz musician and uh, I believe it was after he passed that it came out that he was uh, serially molesting and, and uh, sexually abusing his students. Um, it's, it's, it's incredible that that that's uh, that that could be the case for somebody that was, you know, again, a known community gem. And people knew this, right? People, it was a secret, but it wasn't a secret, right? It was secret, but it wasn't. And then, you know, we, we've got other people. We've had we had Sam Adams, a former mayor who had a relationship with a young man and they either did or did not have sex before he before that young person was. Uh, 17, or I'm sorry, before that person was 18. So depending upon who you believe and what, uh, what, what uh, evidence you look at, uh, the allegations were that, that maybe sexual activity uh, occurred prior to him being of age in Oregon, which is 18. Uh, it, that was not prosecuted, but Sam had to deal with that as a mayor and, you know, even again, as a mayor, do you want your mayor with uh, young 18 year olds in the community? I don't know. Um, that one was that one was a really strange. Uh, that one was a really strange area because it was so close to that um, line of, of legal adulthood here. And then we had the. Uh, another very famous one was the daughter of Mercy Corps which is here in Portland, um, the Mercy Corps founder, very famous man, another community uh, gem, if you will, in, in the parlance of, of Rideshare Beware of Tim. Um, the founder of Mercy Corps was a terrible, insanely abusive uh, pedophile. 
uh, with her, his daughter and with others. And the organization, this Mercy Corps, if you will, nonprofit organization protected her father and his power and the organization, all these things for a very, very long time before they finally uh, started to take accountability for that uh, a couple of years ago. So what, uh, from May 19th of 2021, deep regret inside aid organization. I'll, here, I'll show you this article. Deep regret inside aid organization grappling with sexual abuse. Mercy Corps made a public made public a report detailing sexual abuse allegations, including reports that co-founder Ellsworth Culver arranged for the sexual abuse of his daughter and others. For nearly two decades, the global aid organization had operated with a troubling secret. A daughter of one of the group's longtime leaders, the co-founder. Ellsworth Culver had accused him of years of sexual abuse. So again, another one. And gee, where'd that come from? Mercy Corps of all places. So what do these things have in, in common? Catlin Gable School. That's the oligarch school, man. That's where the wealthy connected people in Portland send their kids. Huge sexual abuse scam a scandal at Catlin Gable going over going over decades with multiple uh, multiple staff members. Mercy Corps, uh, Tara Memory, Matt Hennessy, Neil Goldschmidt. Are you getting kind of a feeling that maybe Portland's got something going on and it's not adrenochrome and QAnon, right? It's it's real, actual people doing real, actual horrible things and escaping accountability. So, um, yeah, good one, Tim. Thank you for thank you for bringing that to light. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. I don't know what this was, but I feel better for for bringing this to light. And you know what? Screw all those guys and screw Ted Wheeler and all these uh, disgusting, disgusting, vile individuals that have no moral compass. And uh, yeah, I got all the charges dropped. Uh, I have not ever been convicted of, uh, of any criminal charges for all of those uh, acts of civil disobedience that I did. So uh, I am proud to this day that I removed uh, and taunted and then later burned a picture of a pedophile on live TV here in Portland. Uh, it's a good story and and uh, one, of, one of many. So you guys have a great night. Say hi. Let me know if you hated this or liked this or whatever. Um, I'm feeling very insecure at the moment. Can you tell? My insecurity is kicking in. Okay. Good night, guys.